Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. I am your host, Rob Leonard, and joining me, of course, is my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard, on this Columbus Day edition 2020. Hello, brother. How you doing? Good morning, brother. Are you, are I'm, you okay? I'm, out, I'm outstanding, as usual. How are you? Okay. Well, I'm glad you're happy. You know, I always worry about when you're not. So... Anyway, so much to talk about. So much, so much to talk about. Um, I don't even—I don't know where to start, brother. I mean, it's all bad news, you know, for for New York fans. Um, Yankees. Yes, it was—it was something out. of a week of woe, brother. The Jets and Giants. Oh, is there a reason to watch them? Even um, no, no, there's no, not. No, no there isn't. <laughs> um, so let's start off, I guess, with the. The Rays, are the, and it's the Rays, not the Devil Rays. As I, I originally wrote Devil Rays, and I wrote, cro- crossed it out. But it is Tampa out. Bay, not Tampa. Yeah, uh, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. I'm no. sorry, the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, um, hi, yeah. Yes, they, yes, they, uh, they beat up on your Yankees, brother. Uh, wait, no, no, that's just ridiculous. First of all, up, what? what? No, no, they didn't beat up anyone. They they went to they went to the final deciding game and they yeah. won by one run. How is that? How is it beating up on anybody? It, they lo- uh, Yankees lost the series. They beat up on. Them. No, that's not. That's not even true. Yeah, it is. I, I think the only it part. Is. The only part about that that is true is is that the the Yankees did lose the series. They were not beaten up, brother. Yeah, but they a lot just, of Yankee they, fans are upset because they, they think, just lost. They think they should be winning every series, so and they didn't. So you know well, what's uh, what's the deal with the the whole series? What 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 went right, right and what went wrong? Yeah, what's the deal? What's the deal with those Yankees? The 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 simple answer, brother, to what went wrong was that the Yankees didn't didn't get the, the clutch hit when they needed it. That's plain and simple. The the the, the, the Tampa Bay has a, a very good uh, bullpen. They they have a a, a pretty good. Uh, I don't even want to say rotation necessarily because they did start. Um, they they did have a, an opener in two of the games, uh, but. They got they got the job done. They, they as 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 Ke- as Ray's manager Kevin Cash so famously said uh, about uh, well I will I'll just say I will say a few weeks ago or several weeks ago uh, that the, the Rays have a lot of guys in their bullpen who could throw ninety eight and and when Cash said it he was threatening the Yankees and and that was a low class move but the fact remains that they have a lot of guys in their bullpen who can throw ninety eight. And that's that's a nice weapon to have, and that's that's what they did. They they beat the Yankees with their bullpen. They were able to, um, you know, just keep keep the Yankees off the scoreboard because they have a lot of guys who throw ninety eight, and they struck out a lot of batters. Uh, the Yankees weren't able to get a big hit when they needed it to take to score a run or take a lead, and then uh, Mike uh, Mike Brasso hit. A home run off off of Arales Chapman, which was uh, the second year in a row that uh, Chapman gave up a home run that ended the Yankee season. So that's that's essentially what happened. Um, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll put it in terms that a friend of mine said to me uh, was that in in the time it took the Los Angeles Lakers to win an NBA title, the Yankees were actually eliminated from two playoffs. In, in the same amount of time that it took the Lakers to win one title. Okay, well, that's, we, that's, we, where we, that's where we are. That's where we are in the sporting world these days, brother. We well, it did. T- you know, the baseball. You gotta say, you know, everything was day after day after day, so there wasn't a, really a, a day off the way they did in in the basketball. And um, I'm just saying, yeah, calendar calendar time, brother. That's what I'm talking about. I know, I know, I know. Um, you know, it's uh, part of the way it is, and. Um, you know, each league did something a little different, I thought. You know, I like the fact that baseball, you know, since there's no travel, you know, played like a five-game series or whatever amount of game series it was. And I think it worked out very well And then that way. But b- basketball, they didn't. You know, they, they waited a little bit. But part of that had to do with uh, TV also. You know, this is where the TV money comes in. And they they say, okay, we, 
you know, we don't want five straight basketball games. Right, and baseball, baseball's baseball's goal when when they set their schedule was they wanted to have the schedule done by a certain date, and that's that was that was what they were going for. And part of right. part of part of being able to do that was that they were they were going to play every day, and and I actually I actually liked it. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not happy the Yankees won, but playing every lost. day is is <coughs> out or lost. I'm sorry, I'm but I'm saying that. Playing every day is how baseball is done during the season, and yeah. then I'm not. I've never been a fan of uh, when when the, the the shift in the postseason where you need three starting pitchers because you have days off built in to the schedule to such an extent that you can you can rest. You know, you still get your still get your 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 ace enough rest that he can pitch. You know, either either two or sometimes even three games. In, in, in if it was a seven game series, um, and and I don't, I've never liked that because it's not it, it's not what you're doing for 162 games. And and if that's the point, is is to uh, do enough in 162 games to get yourself to the postseason. Well, then that postseason should be just like the 162 games. And, and when it's when it's not, then I, I don't I don't understand why there's a difference from one to the other. I've never understood that. When you know, like I said, since since baseball made those changes, it is you, know, you play two games, then there's a day off, then you play three games, then there's another day off, and and sometimes during those three games at, at the you know at the one site, there's a day off even between those. So how how is how is that what you're doing during the season? If all of a sudden now you only need three starters as, as opposed to five, it, it, just, it doesn't make sense. No, I, I agree. I agree with it. And, you know, it's just, and part of it is, you know, you, you want your best players to play and you don't want the number five pitcher to pitch if, if you don't have to have him pitch. You know, you always want your, your first three starters, really. Right. I get you know, that. that. But, but it, it's, it's not, it's not what it is during a season. You, you know, yeah, no, I agree. Not, I agree. You know, so, you know, if those, if that four and number four and five starters, Aren't used in, in in the playoffs or the postseason? Then you know what? I, I don't understand why you have a postseason that's all of a sudden takes makes you know makes a departure uh, from what you're doing during the regular season. Just it, it's it's it never made sense to me, and I always thought it was it was actually kind of ridiculous because why why would you change the conditions of of play for the for the playoffs? It, it's, no, that's that's very good it, point, it's, brother. It's, it's pointless anyway. So anyway, so where where did the Yankees go wrong, brother? And what what are we going to be looking with the Yankees next year to, for them to to get beyond? You know, is uh, you know the Yankees don't accept way just making the playoffs, even though other teams would accept that. But then again, you can't be in the play uh, the World Series every year. We just know that. Um, well, so the expectations where's, where's, are higher. Yeah. yeah, I know, but at the same time, you know. It does just because your expectations are higher doesn't mean it's going to happen. Well, well, nobody, nobody's saying it's going to happen. I mean, that's 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 the other part of the, of the baseball postseason is is it's it's something of a crapshoot. And, and I, you know, I, I think I think at some point the Yankees are going to realize, and and by by Yankees in this case, I'm, I mostly mean uh, the brain trust and and that being Brian Cashman and ownership and and. Whoever else you want to you want to throw in there, but you know the, the Yankees. The reason the Yankees were, were a, a, a dynasty in in the late nineties and, and early two thousands and that that era was because they had great pitching. You know they had David Cohn and Andy Pettit and Clemens was 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 good in that point. And Jimmy uh, Jimmy Key was still there at, for some of it. They had David Wells, David, David, David Wells, uh, El Duque. They had great starting pitching, and ever since then, Yankee fans and and the Yankees and the expectations are there that they they're going to win, they're going to get title number twenty eight. But until they actually put together a rotation that is capable of doing that, then you know what the chances are they aren't going to do it. Because let let's face it, what what happened in in the series against Tampa Bay? All right, Garrett Cole won the first game like he was supposed to, like they're paying him $324 million for, and, and that was the expectation. 
and, and he, he performed as expected. All right, so in game two, Aaron Boone went to this opener setup, which I still don't understand, and I, I thought he was rightfully criticized for, where they started Davey Garcia, which who actually became the youngest uh, youngest Yankee to ever start a World Series game. Um, but they only, they only pitched him for an inning, which didn't really make sense to me because even though he kind of struggled with, you know, with the first inning, you, you could see that he was nervous when the game started. He was very nervous, as a matter of fact. But even, even halfway through, he threw 25 pitches. I would say by the 10th or 12th pitch that he was, he was settled down because the, the you know, the, the bad part of the inning happened early. Uh, uh, Tampa Tampa got a home run, a solo home run, and then he settled down. Then it was like, okay, you know what? It's baseball. Let me just pitch. So twenty five pitches. He comes out. It's one nothing, and then Jay Happ is 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 out there for the second inning. Well, why not let Davey Garcia go another inning? You know, let him go through the lineup once. If, if that's you know the, the goal, the goal for Boone from what he said after the game was he wanted to flip Tampa Bay's lineup. They, they started five lefties against Davey Garcia. They brought in Hap with the thinking of, all right, well, now Tampa's going to have to send a bunch of pinch hitters up. They, they, they're not going to leave the lefties in. Well, they did leave the lefties in, and the lefties were the ones that did the damage against Hap. So, right, so right. The, the, the entire plan backfired. Was and, this and, something that Aaron Boone had nothing to do with, brother? Is this more of a, you know, upper management telling Aaron do this? Yeah, I mean, they, everything is is upper management now. That's and that's you know that's how it is in baseball now. Managers are not left to their own devices anymore. It's all you know. This is this is the whole uh, the whole uh, result of analytics uh, and 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 statistical departments and what. Uh, this is this is what happens. Is they have they have a, you know now there's a staff of people who do this and and Cashman is among those people who is making those decisions. And they go they go through this before the bef- long before a game starts. What are we going to do if this situation happens? This is the move if that situation happens. Everything is planned out, and 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 most most if not all situations are accounted for. So the Yankees knew before the game started. Hey, Garcia is going to be our guy. Even if Garcia would have gone one, two, three in the first inning, chances are he was coming out. Because I don't know, I don't understand why you would you would leave him you you wouldn't leave him out for for a second inning, and and you know, I mean obviously they expected Hap to be better because he had been better, but he wasn't good in in, in you know, from from you know from the uh, for the amount of innings that he was in I I it's my it's just it's just my guess, but I thought I think they probably expected Hap to go at least five or six innings. And he wasn't he wasn't good enough to go five or six innings, so that was the problem with game two, and and then because Yankee fans I'm sure wanted to look at it and says, all right, Cole goes game one, we get the win, Tanaka goes game two, and, and now now we now we're you know now we're we're uh, in in a, in a position of control, and and the series is over because the Yankees have a two nothing lead. Well, it didn't work out that way because it obviously. Tanaka didn't start game two, but then he started game three and he lost. So all of the plans and all of all of the thoughts that, that the Yankee fans were having were, were undone by two things. Number one was was the decision about bringing Happ into game two. And number two was that Tanaka was was not the playoff Tanaka the Yankee fans were used to. Playoff, playoff Tanaka has about a one and a half ERA. The guy, the guy that pitched Game Three for the Yankees wasn't playoff Tanaka, right? Right. So now the Yankee season is reliant on Jordan Montgomery in Game Four, which I, I personally did not have any kind of confidence in. But Jordan Jordan Montgomery surprised me. Gave up one run in four innings. It, it wasn't a great start because he, they pulled him after that and they got the bullpen going. But you know what? It was effective. Jordan Montgomery did the job. Right. No. No Yankee. No Yan- Yankee fans might not like Jordan Montgomery because he doesn't throw hard. He's not overpowering. But I tell you what, for four innings, Jordan Montgomery did the job and and basically saved the Yankee season. So they they scored enough. They won that game. It wasn't a pretty game. It wasn't. There was nothing. There was nothing glorious about it. 
but they got the win and they got the ball at Garrett Cole in game five, which was the plan. And Garrett Cole pitched pitched well. He just, you know, the only the only issue that I had was was that he didn't pitch long enough. But five and a third innings on on short rest, five and a third innings, one run on one hit, which was a home run. So so Garrett Cole made one mistake in in, in that game. And maybe they should have kept him in another inning no, and a half. Absolutely not. Absolutely Why not. Why not? Why not? Because because he's he's pitching on short rest, brother. He threw ninety four pitches. But he if he's pitched, only let up one home run, is he pitching matter. well? No, no. And the point the point is the, the the right before they took him out, the the ball that was the the last out what was a a ball that Brett Gardner had to jump the fence to catch. Garrett Garrett Cole was was he he labored in the first inning. Labored. It was. It was. I didn't. I didn't think it was going to be a, a, a fun day in the first inning, but then the second through the fifth, he he was he he unleashed a beast on on Tampa Bay, because Garrett Cole was was he was he was out he was he was good he was very good as a matter of fact, and even even the home run that he gave up, Aaron Judge probably would have had a chance to catch it, but there's this ridiculous overhang at the right field fence. In, in Petco Park, and when Judge went to jump to make a, to make a, a to try to, to to catch the ball at the fence, his head hit this overhang, so he wasn't able ouch. to jump. No, it's, it's padded. It wasn't even an ouch. It's all padded. But what is it doing there? Why why do you have an overhang at a fence? It doesn't make any sense. I'm just talking from a design standpoint. Why why are you preventing an outfielder from trying to make a catch? I agree. It was ridiculous. I, I saw Aaron Judge. I'm, I'm looking at Aaron Judge, and I'm at the fence, and I'm like, "Hey, we got a six foot seven guy at the fence. I'm happy. Let's let's make the catch." And he goes up, and and it, it, like, he jumped three inches, and then clunk, he hits his head. It's like, what's going on here? And there's a the ball going over the fence. It was it was infuriating because let's face it, there's there's no outfielder I want to try to make that catch than Aaron Judge. He's the tallest guy out there. He's a, he's a great fielder, and if anybody would have had a chance to make the catch, it would have been him. And, and instead, he's pre, he, he's prevented from doing so by the ballpark. Oh, all, all of a sudden, the ball the ball Petco Park is Dikembe Mutombo, <laughs> waving his finger at Aaron Jones. Oh, no, no, no! It, it, it's just ridiculous. So, you know, and then and then he, he, it, when it turns into a bullpen game, that, to me, I'm I'm comfortable. Because the Yan- Yankee fans, they know we have the, the team has a good bullpen. And if, if you're a Yankee fan, you're confident at that point because, you know, here's here's Zach Britton, here, here's Chapman, who I have confidence in Chapman. But now, two years in a row is is the home run that, that, that ends the season. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not pleased about that. Right, right. So, uh, anyway, well, I, I, I could go on and on, brother. But the the game too was was a big thing uh, because the strategy. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not into that whole beginning. that whole reverse pitching thing where you have a guy in there for the first inning or two. Where yes, the old brother, the old yeah, the old, as, as, which is a, I don't like the term. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay basically invented that though. That's and 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 it was because they didn't they didn't have enough guys in a rotation. And they had a lot of great bullpen arms. So at some point, somebody just said, "Hey, why don't we just start a bullpen guy, and we'll we'll throw a bunch of other bullpen guys out there, and we'll and we'll piece it together for nine innings." And they started winning games like that. So they said, right. "You know what? Who need who needs a rotation? Who needs five starters? We'll have three starters, and two of the games we'll throw our bullpen out there." So and and technically, those bullpen guys are starters <laughs> in well, in many ways because they, they they open the game. Technically, they are, but that's yeah. that. That's how they they've chosen to go about getting things done um, with the limited financial resources that they have, and and I, I give them credit for that. I, I mean, you have to give the Rays credit for figuring out different ways of doing things and being effective at doing them. So I, I and that's not just this season. Obviously, that goes back uh, a couple of seasons because I mean, and the Yankees have used that opener as well. You know, last year they did it with Chad Green most of the time, and it, it was very successful. I mean, hugely successful. 
Right. Uh, they right. they won something like nine out of eleven games or something like that. So I mean, if you if you have something that, that you have a a winning percentage of over over eighty percent, yeah, you do it. But um, not every team obviously will have that that much of a winning percentage with the right, right. But again, if you if you ha- if you're having that kind of success, you do it. And and you know the only you know one pitch is is a difference. In the season, because because if if Chapman Chapman you, you they they made the point on television, and I thought it was a good point, and I don't remember who made it. Otherwise, I would give him credit. But Chapman threw a slider to to Brasso, and Brasso because because Brasso was was he was sitting fastball, you could tell, but he threw the slider, and Brasso had started to swing so early. That he hit a foul ball, way way foul down the left field line, but but uh, like uh, near the upper deck, because he was so far out in front of the pitch. And I and I guarantee you, in fact, it might have been Pedro Martinez who said this, but I guarantee you that Chapman thought back to last season and Jose Altuve, and throwing a slider to Altuve that he hit over the fence to give the Astros that series and then that Yankee season, the 2019 season. Right, and, right. And, and and Chapman after that probably said to himself, "I'm not getting beat with a slider again. I'm giving him the number one because relief pitchers don't want to get beat by something that isn't their best pitch." And Chapman throws a hundred, so that's what he was doing. And the pitch that he threw, it wasn't even a bad pitch, and Brasso certainly didn't crush it because I mean it was a home run to the second row. So it was it, it was a line drive home run. He he, he barreled it up for sure, but it, it, it certainly was not a Ruthian clout as as as, uh, as the old timers would call it. Right, it, right. It went, it went over the fence. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. As long as it gets over, even if the guy caught it and then dropped it over the fence, it's still a. It could it's have bounced off his head. It wouldn't have mattered. As long as it goes over the fence, that. that's and the only that. part that matters. That's why I said it. Yeah, well, let's see what happens next year with the Yankees. I think uh, it's going to be a weird off season for them in the sense I think they're going to try um, almost too hard to f- fix what really – yeah, they have a pretty good team otherwise. I mean, uh, they, but they, I think, have, they have a very good team, but you know, the, the problem is I, – I, I'll, I'll give you a couple couple. Uh, couple of lines about the, the, the offseason. I, I just think that, you know, the, the problem with the lineup and the way it's built is obviously it's it's incredibly reliant on the home run. The, the, this, this Yankees team right. does, not, does not manufacture runs. Uh, no hidden run. And it, it, it's basically incapable of manufacturing runs. Uh, that's why I think, number one, it, it's, it's incredibly important that they re-sign uh, E.J. LeMahieu, uh, who for the last two years has been the biggest bargain in baseball. Uh, but it, it's 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 a matter of how much is it going to take and how how many years and how much money because DJ LeMahieu is not going to to say oh yeah twelve million dollars a year is fine he, he's he's gonna he's gonna require probably close to twenty million dollars a year because he 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 won a batting title this year he's a guy who gets big hits who is is actually a hitter and and is not up there swinging for the fences he he's a guy who's going to get on base. He's going to get clutch hits when you need clutch hits, and and if, if if I'm the Yankees and I have the bases loaded and I I need somebody up there to get a hit, then DJ LeMahieu is the guy I want up there because I know he's going to battle and I know he's going to put the ball in play. I I I, I, I don't think he'll hit a grand slam, but I don't care. That's if, unless I need a grand slam. But he's the guy I want up there because he is a, as professional a hitter as there is in baseball. Um, so that is one important thing. And I and, and I think Yankee fans need to prepare for the fact that the rotation next year is going to be very different than what it was this year. Um, and and you know the the one you, you have uh, Tanaka and and James Paxton both are free agents. I, I I certainly don't see the Yankees bringing back both of them. In fact, they might bring back neither one of them. Um, Tanaka is is going to turn thirty two in, in in a couple of weeks. All right. Um, Paxton has had injury issues, uh, as Yankee fans know. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if the Yankees want to make that investment. I mean, he's 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 going to probably take it's going to probably take up somewhere in the five year hundred million dollar neighborhood to sign him. And he's a guy who has 
an injury history, and and it, he he doesn't get little injuries. He gets he gets big injuries. He gets well, injuries five that, years, a hundred million dollars is not something the Yanks are going to go for. Well, you I know. mean, they they certainly could if they wanted to. It's just a matter yeah, of not, no, do they healthy. think do they think he'll stay healthy? And that's I, I mean, I, that's any team. There's going to be a team out there. It's going to offer Paxton big money. Then it becomes do the Yankees want to offer more? Um, and and this it's, it's the same goes for Tanaka. I mean, Tanaka made twenty, I think it was twenty three million. I think it was this year. Um, and, and like I said, he's about to turn thirty two. I'm sure the Yankees wouldn't mind giving him a two year two year deal or a three year deal, but I, I doubt they want to pay him twenty three million dollars again. I mean, he, he's he's getting older, and, and he, he's another guy who um, he, he gets tired during the season, and and he 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 doesn't get injured necessarily, but he kind of wears down, and there there are too many starts where he'll only go five innings because he doesn't have anything else left. Um, right, right. So, so that's another issue, and and you have to also remember, Luis Severino is going to be coming back from Tommy John surgery at some point in the 2021 season. Um, Domingo Harmon, who didn't pitch at all this year because of the MLB suspension uh, for for when he hit his girlfriend, um, he'll be back. Um, I, I think Davy Garcia should be a member of next year's rotation. I don't think he needs after after what he showed this year. I don't think he needs to go back to the minor leagues just because he's 21. Let the kid pitch. He showed he's ready for this level, and there's no reason he, he shouldn't be in the rotation. Um, and and then the the wild card in all of this is going to be whether or not the Yankees decide to go after Trevor Bauer, uh, who is a Cincinnati Reds starter who has been with the Indians. Um, and, and he's he's a, a, a unique case because, number one, he's very talented. Uh, I, I think he's going to be the National League Cy Young Award winner this season. Uh, but the other thing is that he is, is a very unique personality and part of that personality is that he doesn't get along with Garrett Cole. They, they went to college together at UCLA. Uh, they didn't get along. Uh, Bauer claims that they have put that behind them. But if Cole is your guy who you signed to this record-setting contract, do you want to bring somebody in that he has previous acrimony with and, and run that potential of disrupting the clubhouse? And, and, and the other thing is Bauer is, again, a unique personality. He has said in the past that he only wants to sign one-year contracts when he gets to be a free agent because he, he says that he, that will maximize his value as a pitcher. Wow, that's a, that's a Charles O. Finley thing, Tim. Right, exactly. I remember Charles but, O. Finley wanted one-year contracts. He would right, love that. But, but to do that, now you're going to have to sign this guy. First of all, if he wins a, a, a Cy Young Award from the National League, you're, you're talking about a contract that's going to start at $30 million. So if it's one year for even $35 million, it's going to be in that range. This this is not a guy who's going to you're going to sign for $20 million. It's not going to happen. There's no, too but... Many, yeah. Too many teams willing to offer that. Well... <laughs> I think with, just, with with that situation, you know, the yearly that's that's very brave of him. Well, you know, I mean, that's as, he, as he thinks he thinks he he's confident enough in his health and, and his preparation, and and he's 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 a guy who has his own training methods uh, that that are un, unconventional, but he's confident enough in his routine that he will he will he will be able to do that. Now, I'll give you an example, um, John Harper. Long, you know, uh, longtime baseball writer for the Daily News, and is now I think writing for SNY. Um, he said the Mets should sign Bauer at, at a, on a one-year deal for forty million dollars. So, so that's Harper's educated opinion as far as what it would take. Well, let's put out. that, that's and successful. that would be a that would be a great um, hello from Steve Cohen to the Mets fans. Exactly. You know? And so, if he, and it's only one year, so if he screws up. Okay, I you know next year yeah you know, we're not we won't hire him again, you know so. Well, but that's that's the point. That's is, not is a bad now, idea. Those those that's that's the figures that you're talking about. Those are the numbers that you're talking about to 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 get Trevor Bauer, um, and and chances are he's going to give you that kind of performance. He's going to give you uh, Garrett Cole type numbers, and that is the kind of guy. If you if you put Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer together in a rotation, 
I, first of all, A, you have a playoff team automatically. Just with those two guys as, as starters, you would have a playoff team. Um, but to, to put them around around with Severino, uh, assuming that Domingo Herman has the same sort of uh, performance that he did in, in 2019, then you, you're talking about a really good rotation at this point. And, and Davey right. Garcia, who has shown in his brief, you know, small sample size cameo appearance in the major leagues that he's ready for this level. My only issue with, with that rotation would be you don't have a single left hander in it. And, and right. I well, don't know, I don't know if Brian Cashman would do that. Because I know well, he likes to have at least we'll, one left. We're going to take a break right now, Tim. You're listening to 90.3. WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. The show you're listening to is from the press box here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We're part of the WHPC Sports Talk family, which is Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., with an additional show every Tuesday from 10 p.m. to midnight. I am Rob Leonard, and joining me, of course, every week is my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. Uh, Tim, let's uh, quickly talk about Whitey Ford. He died uh, at 91 this past week uh, in Lake Success. He was a Long Island guy, for those who didn't know. Yeah. Uh, truly. But actually, actually grew up in a story of Queens, brother. Grew up in a story, but I think he played in Rockville Center, you know, at one point, or maybe because there was an organized league there. So I remember Rockville Center for something. But he, he's he, there's a Long Island thing with him. Um, truly yeah, one of the great. Here. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, truly one of the great players of all time, um, and especially for the Yankees. Um, nicknamed the chairman of the board before Frank Sinatra was, by the way. Yes. Um, Elston Howard gave him that nickname. That's right. And then, and then Will, Willie B. Williams took it and made it for Frank Sinatra. Um, I mean, he his records are just incredible. He has uh, the winningest uh, percentage as a pitcher, uh, which is, in, you know, you think about it. But at the same time, he never got to 300 wins. Now, part of it happen. was, yeah, yeah won, that's part won, of it. He won 236 games with the a Yankees record with uh, in, in 16 seasons, which it's it's pretty impressive. And two of those uh, years, he was in the military service, right? Um, and and you think of that, you know, that whole military thing. You think like someone like Whitey Ford and Willie Mays, two years out of their prime. Yeah, you know, Willie exactly. Mays probably would have had over 700 home runs. You know, and and, um, and Whitey Ford. And Whitey Ford probably would have had another, you know, forty wins probably. He made probably two, two, yeah, thirty-five at least thirty-five. So that puts him at two seventy. Yeah, as so, far as uh, wins. So it's just amazing that uh, this guy. This guy um, had thirty-three consecutive scoreless innings in the World Series in nineteen sixty-one. Uh, he beat up uh, on Babe Ruth's record when Babe was pitching for the Red Sox. Um, yeah. Imagine having Whitey Ford in the rotation with Garrett Cole. <laughs> Forget about it. You know who reminded me of Whitey Ford a little bit? Um, I don't know. Uh, Andy Pettit. I always thought. Well, that yeah, there were there was there were similarities with between the two of them. I mean, you know, Pettit Pettit was another guy. I mean, he he certainly didn't do it with velocity. Uh, he, yes. he was he was a guy. He was he you know he had to do it with uh, with with uh, with location and a little bit of guile and. You know, and why? And why he was somebody? He, you know, he didn't mind telling you. Yeah, he cheated every once in a while. You know, yeah, he he threw, he, he threw a spitball, and he liked to scuff the ball, and you know, he he did he did these things, and and got away with it. Yeah, that was you know he, he admits it too. You know, he's not going to say, "Well, I didn't do that." Um, he was pretty honest, and he was part of that. You know, it's almost mythical now when you think about um, that era with Mickey Mandel, you know, who's his best buddy, and Billy Martin, and. Uh, and Hank Bauer and those guys, uh, you know, partying during the night, you know, going to the Copacabana. Um, it's become always mythical, but it, a lot of it was true. They 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 hit the town very hard, and that's part of the um, the charm of Whitey Ford and Mickey Mantle and the rest of them, um, that they were so good at the same time. Um, they, while they, took the it, they took it, took advantage of all New York had to offer, brother. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, the, when you think about it, He's just one, truly one of the greats. The last two seasons weren't too good for, for Whitey. The Yankees themselves weren't that good. That's part of it. Um, no, but his uh, arm, his arm, his arm was shot by then. He he had he had the the, the blood clot issue or the, the the circulation issue in his arm, and 
he, he couldn't sweat on his left side, and every time he started, his fingers would get tingly, and you know he he had he had some issues going on there. And that, that, those last two seasons, that that was that was a result of, of everything that was going on. That you know he he was compromised by then. But you know you look at him 11, 11 American League pennants and six World Series titles during his sixteen year career. So yep. and and a, and a ten time All Star. So yep, and he went into the Hall of Fame. Uh, the same year as Mickey Mantle. Man- Mantle uh, was f- five years, and Whitey was six years after retirement. Right, um, which was a, yeah, it was a nice uh, thing. Well, it was, I'm sure it wasn't done on purpose, but uh, it, no, it's it just, looks, it's, you know, it's just Whitey, something I, that happens. It, it's still it's still stunning to me that, that Whitey Ford wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, I agree because he, he's he's clearly one of the one of the one of the great pitchers in Major League history. And and I, I would I would love to have seen the ballot from that year and, and see all right well who made it and 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 who who was who was judged to be better but you have to also have to remember back then almost nobody made it first ballot right it, it, was, it, almost it, it, was, it was almost on yeah, purpose it was almost on purpose yeah it was it was kind of a point of point of pride with, with the writers that well it's, we're only going to like it's only going to be true legends that are that are first ballot guys and but again I don't know how Whitey Ford isn't in that group. That's that's how good he was. Oh sure, sure. From, from when when you're talking about, I mean, if you're talking about great left-handed pitchers in the game, you, you're talking Sandy Colfax, Whitey Ford, Steve Carlton. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to even think of a fourth, and or Randy Johnson. I guess you throw in there, but there's, right. there's there's not a whole lot of other guys, and and every Yankee from that era. Uh, it said that if if you're in, if you're in Game Seven of the World Series and and you need somebody to start that game, that Whitey Ford's your guy. Yeah. And the, and the only didn't... other guy, the only other guy I could think of who I would want to start that game is Gibson. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. It. You know, and and there's no disrespect to Tom Seaver, Sandy Colfax, or any of those guys. I want one of those two guys starting that. No, I agree. And uh, one more thing about. Um... Whitey, you know, he didn't have many 20-game winning seasons. No. But um, when Ralph Houck took over for Casey in 61, um, he changed the way um, the pitching staff was used, and that's when he started to get 20-game winning seasons. Well, yeah. I mean, the change that he made was he went to a four-man rotation. So, obviously, Whitey Ford wound up getting you know almost 40 starts a season as opposed to 32 or so. Uh, and and it gives you more chances to win games. That's 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 why there aren't twenty game winners anymore. It, has, it doesn't have anything to do really with with you know, pitchers being any less talented than they used to be. But if you start thirty two games a season, it's not easy to win twenty games. In fact, it's really hard because yeah. thirty. Think about thirty two games. How many how many of those games are you even getting decisions in? And and then you have to win twenty of them. I mean, if, if you if you get if you get a decision in, in every game you start out of thirty two, that's twenty and twelve to, to win twenty games. So right, right. It's it's not easy. No, it's not. And and uh, he was uh, truly one of the greats. And uh, and and afterwards enjoyed uh, you know being the you know the Yankee who showed up at uh, you know old timers game. And you know you knew he was sick the last couple of years when uh, he wouldn't run out. To the, the the fair line, um, he would just come out on the on the golf cart. You know, you knew that things were getting. Yeah, I mean, you you could you know, tell, but I mean, you yeah. know, like you know, the man was you know in his late eighties and nineties. I mean, how, how many people are how many how many how many guys in, in their late eighties or oh, you know, running out there, or yeah. trotting out to the foul line to, to join everybody? It's, it's you know, I mean, he he. Let's put it this way: Whitey, Whitey Ford, what a life this this guy had. Oh, great life! And there's a, there's a few few piece, have had better lives than any. There was a piece of footage that that popped up on my feed, and it was 1974. How they saved it, I don't know, but it was uh, an old timers game, and Whitey Ford threw a meatball to Mickey Mantle, there you and go. Mantle clocked it out of the uh, the stadium. You know, out of a, he got a home run. Probably, and the probably place Whitey was, a beer afterwards. He, there was the place just erupted. You know, it was like, of course, it was the only time that Whitey threw a, you know, a pitch like that to Mickey because he was always on the same team. So, of course, and Whitey was smart enough to know that no, nobody, nobody wants him to strike out Mickey Mantle. No, they want, no. they want Mickey. They want to see how far Mickey Mantle can still hit a baseball. So Whitey, right. Whitey throws him a, a lollipop, and and Mickey beat the hell out of it. So uh, it's a great swing. That's what and I, have to, I have to say. 
Mickey ran better around the bases in 74 than he did when he hit his 500th, where he basically could walk. It's probably so, true. Yeah. It's probably true because he, he wasn't he wasn't running around every day beating beating his legs up and and having having to go through all all of the, all the wear and tear. I mean, you know, those old timers day that was the only day of the year he was playing. So right, he was, yeah, he, so. Was, he was able he was able to rest up a little bit. He, he rested up a little bit. Anyway, I want to talk. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to put the Jets and the Giants to the last part of the show, brother, because it's just so depressing to talk about. Um, who's this guy, Gareth Bale, brother? I mean, oh, do Gareth I have to make Bale. a T-shirt? Do I have don't to make a T-shirt? Me, don't don't get him? me so excited. Don't get me so excited this early in the show, brother. Who is well, Gareth Bale? Well, first who of all, is Gareth, he? I've never heard of him. First of all, Gareth Bale, you, you need to pay more attention to soccer. Gareth Bale is, 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 even still today, one of the best players in the world. And yep. he, he he had been playing for the last seven seasons uh, at Real Madrid in Spain. Uh, and that was after he was sold for what was then a record, a world record fee uh, from, from my Tottenham Hotspur. It was a very sad day for us Tottenham fans when Gareth Bale was sold because he was at that point probably the greatest player in the world. Uh, Better than Harry but, Kane? But Gareth Bale, the, Harry Kane is up there too. He's one of the top ten as well. But Gareth Bale has has finally coming home because Tottenham Tottenham acquired him. They they got him on a loan deal in, in the uh, summer window uh, that actually just ended uh, last week. Uh, but Gareth Bale is, or not last week? Uh, well, yeah, about last week. Um, but Gareth Bale will make his debut or his, his reintroduction uh, for Tottenham this coming weekend against West Ham uh, United. Um, now, the reason that, that that is is they acquired him a few weeks ago, but he had a knee injury, and he, he hasn't been able to play, so he's been working his way back in shape, and he has been judged healthy enough to play. So all, all I can say is look out, brother, because right. Tottenham's front line will be Gareth Bale on the right, Harry Kane in the middle, and my man, young man Son on the left. And I don't care... Who says anything different? But as far as I'm concerned, if those three guys are healthy and performing, that is the best front line in the entire world. It's got speed. It's got it's got danger, finishing potential. It is going to be just a, a ferocious front line that is going to terrorize the Premier League. And, and I can't wait for it to happen. I just want them to be able to play and be injury free. That's my only hope for this season. No injuries, and Tottenham is going to be the most fun team to watch. Definitely in the Premier League and maybe in the world, because that and and, and nobody has ever said that Jose, that Jose Mourinho teams are are fun to watch. But this should be fun to watch if he just gets out of their way and lets them do what they can do. So I can't wait until this happens. Uh, this this weekend coming up, when when uh, when Tottenham plays West Ham, I, 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 I can guarantee you that I will be in front of my television watching, and and hopefully NBCSN has already decided to put this game on television because I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Because Peacock is a streaming service and they need service uh, to you know games to watch. Yeah, well, so that might be part of it. For those it, who don't know, do it, uh, do it with a different game. Uh, for those who don't know, <laughs> a lot of soccer games that used to be on, well, were supposed to be on NBCSN, are now on the Peacock streaming service because they need you know soccer fans to get involved with Peacock. So, or anyone to get involved with Peacock, not just soccer fans. But um, you know that happens, brother. You know they, that's why one of the reasons they buy these games is uh, they know people like you are going to uh, go go crazy for. You know Gareth and and Harry Kane and the rest of them. So, um, you know why not? I mean, it's you know it's it's uh, you know it's amazing that they show all the soccer, you know, international soccer now in the United States. I'm not sure what the ratings are on it, but there is a hardcore following for it. So yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. But but yeah. Sunday Sunday October 18th, brother, 11:30 here in New York. That is going to affect. I'm surprised the game is 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 actually that late because Tottenham and West West Ham is. It's a, what they call a London derby, and and to to play it at four thirty over there gives gives 
gives the lads a little too much time to, to, to get hammered uh, before the match, and that's when the fights start and everything else. So, no, I, they don't. I'm, they don't get drunk I'm, at those games. I'm, those, I'm, I'm, I'm actually those surprised. That, fans. I'm actually surprised that it's not a noon start over there, and would be uh, you know seven o'clock here. Um, I'm which, surprised I, it's at eleven o'clock in sports. the morning. Well, but yeah, you know, well, I don't blame I mean, you, brother. But, you know, but they, you know, the fact that they have a, a, a twelve o'clock game is amazing. You know, well, eleven thirty for us. It's four thirty for them. Yeah, but still, it's but like know. like like I said, that's it's 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 entirely too many hours to drink before the game for them, and, and it's it's going to cause some issues. But it will be at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, obviously, there there still is no no crowds. In fact, uh, in fact, several several areas of London are going on lockdown again because their COVID rates are starting to spike again over there. Well, brother, uh, you know, maybe we can send you over there. Maybe we can get the budget for no. from the press box to have you cover. They won't, they won't let it. England. England isn't letting Americans in, brother. So the answer oh. to your question is no. <laughs> Well, much you could as I, be much as I would love to be there. Much as I would yeah. abso- absolutely love to be there, I, I will have to settle. Or being uh, in, in front of my television um, with uh, with a, with a pint, and we'll get you. Uh, uh, my, we'll my get you a Canadian passport. Uh, I wish. I wish. Uh, I wish I had some steak crisps uh, from from uh, from the UK to, to to munch on during the match. But uh, that that is unfortunately it won't be able to happen. Because you know, you should do, brother. I'm serious. Go to the British Embassy in New York. There's got to be a, one there. Yeah, Say you'd like to buy some crisps. <laughs> And, well, uh, I, I can get them. They, they do. There is a, a British shop uh, in the in the West Village. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Because it's it's uh, it's next door to a, a fish and chip shop. I'm, I, I don't know if I should give a plug or not, but um, don't, don't. it is it is it is in the West Village, and it's and it's very good. I've eaten there. Oh, okay, so you so you know. Okay, um, then, then you pricey, get these chips. pricey, but worth the pricey. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. but yeah, you can order that stuff too online now. It's it, it's not impossible not to get like it used to be, but it's, yeah. you know, it's 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 expensive. Yeah, well, um, so it's it's an expense I choose to live without. But it's uh, yeah, I would like to have some some steak Christmas for this. Maybe maybe, be, maybe I can buy it for you for Christmas, brother. You know, there nice you Christmas present. I'll, I'll let you know what to get. Okay, brother. Quickly, the Lakers uh, beat up on the Heat. No, stop using that phrase. Beat up. Why do you keep saying that? But they, well, they, 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 the last what? game, yes, they beat them up. I'll give you that. How about that? Uh, they thank you. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you there for you correcting go. my use of language. You're, um, you're using beat up. Right? Yeah, I like it. I, I think it's great because they beat up the Heat. They, they beat the Heat. In was game losing six, yeah. in game six, they did. Brother. I, I again, I will give you that. The, the Lakers had a thirty point lead in the third quarter. They they coasted to to a victory. It was uh, one hundred six to ninety three uh, that that gave them the NBA title in in six games. They won the series four games to two. Uh, LeBron James got his fourth Finals MVP award. He, he's, he's closing in on Michael Jordan uh, on, on uh, a third team though. On a third team, but, yeah, and that's and that's you know, that's impressive in in that in a way. Uh, you know, LeBron James has been the, the the one to choose all of these teams that he's gone to. He he obviously hasn't really cared to be a one a one team player in his career. Right. But at the same time, he is what thirty six, I believe, thirty five. Yeah, 36. it's hard to believe that he's that old now. You know, you, you yeah. know, I I I when I heard that last night, I was watching the end of the thing. And I was like, really, he's that old? Yes. I was just, I was very <laughs> shocked. I was very shocked because. You know, he's, he's, he's been around, but he came in very early, and he, you know, he's, yeah, I just I just didn't put it all together. I mean, he has, what, two more years, maybe? Oh, at least, you know? more than that. Look at, I mean, what, what what did he do? What did he do? What is he, has he done in the last couple of years to make you think that, that he's, he only has two years left? He, he well, almost never pay. gets hurt. He, yeah, he, I know, he, brother, but. As, it, he, yeah. as he said last night, he's never missed a playoff game. Never, yeah, not I know. once. I know. Yeah, but, so. It's it's not it's it's just you know you you hit the edge of the cliff and you're like oh okay what do I do now well, so LeBron James is he he is a he is a guy who doesn't get hurt he is a guy who takes takes incredible care of his body I, I certainly can see him if he chooses to and and if he if he if he is still if he's still serviceable at that point I could see him playing until he's forty. And it's not that far away. He's still no. clearly one of the one of the, the the handful of best players in the game. And that's true. No, you know, he's, 
to be able to say I'd, that at I'd, 35 or 36 is incredible. I would I would say he is the, still the best player in the game. Uh, we should say that this is this is the Lakers' seventeenth title, and uh, the congratulations to the ties, Boston ties, ties in with the Boston Celtics for the most yes. ever in the NBA. So that's uh, Celtics, Celtics are just fading into oblivion, just slowly, little by little. That's right. And uh, so yeah, the, Knicks are, the Knicks are two decades behind both of them now. But uh, I'll just, just point that out. Yeah, the Knicks. Hey, you know what? They said that no Broadway until May now, and that also means there's no games at, at Madison Square Garden or the Barclays Center until May. Right, right. Um, I don't know what they're going to do when the NBA starts up in January or whatever, because it's there is no no whatever. It's, it's that's it, it, if they're not going to have Broadway shows, then they're not going to have. Fans of basketball games. There's, there's nothing well, the Knicks can do about that. That's that's coming from the state, or or it's coming from the city. It's coming from it's one coming or the from other the city. Well, but it's not if 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 they're not going to have Broadway shows for that long, then they then they're not going to have sporting events. It's the same um, it's the um, same process. I, I, same process I hate to say it, brother, and there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies in the next four months. Well, let's um, let's hope let's hope that something good happens with the with the COVID and. Maybe people well, start to realize that if they wear masks, that that they will 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 well, not. Well, New York had the out. lowest amount, and it's it's still you know, it's still a problem. So um, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I do worry. About, I do worry the about issue. the theaters. You know, not just musical theaters, but you know, places where bands play, and um, you know, just going out of business. You know, the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City. Um, uh, you, which is a personal thing for you and me, brother. I don't know if you know that. Um, is closing down. It's been Very there for a hundred years. Very sad. So, um, your mom and dad got married there. So I know. So anyway, we, let's we quickly... wouldn't be here without the Roosevelt Hotel. That's true. Well, maybe. Okay, brother. Let's quickly talk about the Giants and the Jets. Uh, yeah, they are each. Quickly. Each let's, let's, fighting, end, let's end the show on sad notes. <laughs> they're they're each fighting to see who could be the worst team in New York. Uh, the fighting, Giants, fighting for for the rights to Trevor Lawrence. They the Giants seem to be winning. I mean, the Jets seem to be winning that contest. The Jets are just horrible right now. They're uh, at least at least the Giants gave the Cowboys a shot yesterday. Uh, they almost won, actually. Moral victory uh, for the Giants. Moral victories, you know, don't count. But the Giants lost 37-34 to the boys. Jets lost, oh, this doesn't even count, uh, to the Cardinals 30-10. to I, I, will point this, I will point this out, brother. But I, I, will, I will interrupt you to point this out, that Boomer Esiason, former Jets quarterback Boomer Esiason, called the Jets-Cardinals game at halftime, called it a scrimmage. Wow. That's, that's how bad the Jets are right now. He, Boomer is Sias and their own former quarterback called the game a scrimmage because the Jets well, are not a competitive team at this point. It's, it was a, an embarrassment to even try to watch it. Um, the only I reason guess, I even watched it for for a little while was because I was I was shocked to see Le'Veon Bell was back. Yeah, I was like, wait, that's Le'Veon Bell. Wait a minute, he's playing, and Sam Darnold's not playing, and Joe Flacco is playing, and oh, what a disaster. Yeah, Flacco didn't. Uh, you know, if you if you try, I mean, when you get your chance, you got to make something of it. And and obviously, this team isn't help going to help Joe Flacco, no. um, which is unfortunate. But it's just just a a miserable game to watch. And you know, we could have an zero and sixteen season for both these teams if if they play their cards right. Um, well, I don't know if the Giants will go zero and sixteen, but the Jets, I'm fairly confident, will go zero and sixteen unless unless they win one of those two games against the Miami Dolphins. That's the yeah. only chance for a win on their schedule. Otherwise, right. otherwise the Jets, uh, you know, unless unless you know, I, I don't, I don't think Sam Darnold is 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 capable of having a monster game that that he would need to have to to single handedly beat a team. I don't think he's capable of it because I don't think it's built into the into the, the Jets' offensive game plan, because Darnold would have to hit some home runs. You know, we're talking like fifty and sixty yard touchdown passes, and that that's not part of the Jets' game plan. But right. I, I'm I'm fairly confident the Jets are going to go zero and sixteen. That that's that's how little the Jets have shown this season. And and, and well, really, really for me, the story of the Jets is is in in the last week, two teams have fired their head coaches. 
and that would be the Houston Texans and the Atlanta Falcons. The, the thing, the, the thing, shocking thing to me is why aren't the Jets one of those teams? Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's a good question. I th- is, is Rich Kotite still alive? Uh, who knows? Probably. Uh, I mean, I, I expect some Rich Kotite stories coming up uh, soon when they hit about 11 losses in a row. So, wow. Um, it's it's, but, just, it's been a, it's been a disaster because as, as the the Jets they really haven't been competitive, and that to me is the very least that that a professional team should be is competitive. And the Jets yeah, aren't you, even that. You want to follow a team that says, okay, you know they're trying at least, or at least if they're trying that they're trying with uh, their guts, you know. Uh, so I mean I don't know. You know what bothered me about the uh, the Giants yesterday, brother? Right before halftime. Um, they they took a kneel instead of trying to just go for the end zone. With, yeah, but that's with, where where was the ball? It was like on the forty yard line. But you know, at least try. You know, why why do that? The reason the reason they do that is because if well, first of all, Daniel Jones fumbles a lot. Well, Too much. I know that, but I mean, but they, you they, know what? They, they lost that. To me, they lost that game in 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 I think it was the second quarter. Uh, when Daniel Jones was sacked, the Cowboys had just made a seventeen ten. Daniel Jones right. went back, was sacked, and it was I don't know who, who missed the play. I don't know if it was the first round pick, the Thomas kid, or what. But the Cowboys guy came around from from uh, from Jones's blind side, hit him. Ball comes loose like it always does with Daniel Jones, and the Cowboys pick it up, run it back twenty nine yards, and that ties the game to seventeen seventeen. And I posted on Facebook immediately after that play. The Giants just lost this game, and then yeah, this well, was a game that, that they had led seventeen to three. And as soon right, as that they, happened, they, I said, "You know what? They're losing this game." The opportunity was there for the the, the Giants to win, and but you know, I, I I always think you go far downhill. I mean, uh, down uh, downfield just to try. You know what? Why? Yeah, but the reason that's the reason they don't is because if the sack comes like that, Daniel Jones fumbles. And they turn it into a touchdown. Well, well, now you just cost yourself not only seven points, but but now guys are going into the locker room for halftime, and and, and the the mood is bad. And and if and you have to worry about doing that all the time, brother, then maybe uh, it, you shouldn't be playing. No, that's the yeah. reason they do it. That's the reason they do it is because they don't want something bad to happen. But, it has but yeah, to do but with anything else. No, but they also you know the the, the Cowboys are then going to throw you know five men in the secondary or something to prevent a pass. So you know, it's, it, he'll have his time. I mean, that's just me, though. I mean, not anyway. necessarily, not necessarily. Anyway, and, brother, I mean, the, 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 well, I just want to say the big, the big thing from up. that game is, is Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott uh, with a gruesome injury, uh, right? In a, a compound fracture and dislocation of the right ankle. Uh, oh, it was, it was, it was. His foot was bent at a very unnatural angle, and he's going to be out for probably uh, they say in four to six months. Wow, um, like Joe Th- Joe Theismann? Uh it, it was it was uh, it was close to as gruesome as that. It wasn't right. as bad as as the tib fib as they call okay. it that okay. Theismann did, but yeah, it was bad. Okay, brother, we got to end the show. Uh, thank you, brother Tim Leonard, uh, for another fine show. You've been listening to from the press box right here on <coughs> excuse me on ninety point three WHPC. Uh, we're here every Monday nine a.m. to ten a.m. This will be a podcast later on Spreaker dot com. Coming up next at 10 o'clock, Big Ed with the Good Gold Show. Thanks, Sean Novak, for keeping us on the air. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.